Good morning, friends and the online viewers, and welcome to our um, Tuesday morning chapel. And how are you today, guys? Good. Okay. So thank you for our song service today, Thomas, uh, Christian, Clay, and Brain. And now I will invite our speaker come to give us opening prayer. And today I want to teach you. Teach, uh, teach you guys my language. Welcome is called Funyang, Funyang Pastor Graham. Thank you. Uh, right, I've been duly welcomed. It was such a thrill to sit back there and listen to uh, all of you sing <clears throat> under the direction of the uh, song leaders and Thomas. And I'm very grateful for this injection of real verb into our morning worships. I, I am just really grateful. And Thomas, I don't know if you remember, but uh, I had mentioned something to you about helping me out. So if you don't mind, I'll pull some fast ones on you and, and ask you to play him or two and <clears throat> give you some ideas of different styles. Let's, uh, if you can, bow your, or kneel with me, uh, please do so. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank thee for the privilege of worshiping you corporately on this Tuesday morning. And we just pray for your spirit and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now today I'm going to ask you to use your imaginations a great deal. I'm not going to use the whiteboard. Um, I'm going to have you picture it up here. So the first thing I'm going to do is give a disclaimer from yesterday. I was not put up to that subject. Nothing happened at the school. There's nothing unusual going on. There's no sneaky, you know, thing that we had. It's just something I came up with. And um, I just wanted to make that real clear. There's not a highway patrol looking at all the relationships here. All right. Having said that, I said to, this week would be a little different. It would be kind of a mosaic. We're going to not just stick, stick with one general theme, but we'll intersperse our issues of the day with a couple of music uh, chapels, maybe even three, I'm not sure. And then when my turn comes up down later in the quarter, we'll probably do the same that week so that we've covered the curriculum that we have because as some of you know, the chapels are now part of our curriculum and there's certain things that we need to uh, defend academically and so we will get them covered just in a little different way here. So we're going to talk about music. Oh, mm. you know, music is a funny thing. Um, <clears throat> no, I'm not going to put Thomas to shame. But, uh, you know, if you hear a basic chord, C chord, or you might hear an F chord, you know, or you might hear a G chord. And what's your ear going to tell you is next? A C chord. Now, for musicians, that's simply one, four, five, one. And that gives you that sense of completeness or sense of landing the plane. Now, having said that, if you can understand just basic hymnology, you can understand Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. So uh, those of you who were here last year, I hope you remember some of these things. And you'll have a cheesy grin. Yes, I remember us talking about that. So we're going to look at just some basic uh, things in music today. First of all, um, some analysts would say music is made up of three elements. The melody, the harmony, and the rhythm. And when they're out of balance, uh, things get out of balance. Now, other analysts would add two more factors, not just melody, harmony, and rhythm, but tone, color, 
and form. And when we say tone color, if I were to blind uh, Ina up here and had him come up and blindfolded him and then had different ones of you parade in front of him and just say Heartland, he could probably tell who it is because that is the sound of your voice, that unique sound that makes you, you. Now in music, we capitalize on that. So that an orchestra, for example, is filled with many different voices, right? And by the way, the orchestra doesn't have the most uh, variations in instruments. You know what that ensemble would be? It would be the symphonic band. There are more instruments in a symphonic band than in an orchestra as far as different kinds of instruments. Now, typical orchestra anyway. Having said that, let's think about what are the sounds that ring between your earlobes when you hear an orchestra. Well, the first group you probably notice are the strings. And who might that be? Who's the high string? Violin. Violin. Who's next? Viola. Viola. And what's the difference between a violin and viola? Not much. A viola, somebody could walk up here and play the viola and they might trick 85% of you because they look pretty much like a violin, but they have a little what? Deeper sound. They're more Del Delker-like, contralto, you might say. And then the, the next biggest one would be the cello. You know, the one that you saw like this as you're seated. And we have one of those, uh, uh, who is it that plays for our, Bell, yes. And uh, that has a great sound. What comes after the cello? Bass. The string bass, you know, that's higher, taller than you are. And they either blow it, or if they're playing other kinds of music, they'll what? Pluck it. So that's essentially the basic uh, structure of the strings. Let's see, what else do we have in an orchestra? Woodlands. So give me the, uh, what we usually consider the highest voice of the woodlands. Flute. And some of you get a funny look. Well, there's a member of the flute family that's higher than the rest, which is piccolo. piccolo. Little piccolo, you know. And then there are all kinds of flutes. I had the privilege one time of playing, I think it was a bass flute or a tenor flute, I mean that's really fun because they can make flutes that are so big that it would just knock your socks off. Big flutes, and, and you have to hold these things. It's, it's interesting. But your typical flute is uh, thought of as a C instrument, so when it plays C, it sounds like a C on the piano. We'll get into some of that in a little bit. Now, I know some of you are thinking, why is a flute instrument in the woodwinds? Because it's not wood. Well, that's just the way it is. Actually, if you go way back, you know, a lot of flutes are made out of what? Wood, different styles of wood. And some of you have played an early flute. Um, what do you call those things coming out of the Middle Ages that are like flutes, but they're played this way instead of transverse? Yes, a recorder. And uh, those are great. So we have the flute. Who else is in the woodwind instrument? Oh, Paul. Oh, he went exotic on us right away, so we'll just start. I'm going to play for you. I was going to bring some of my instruments today. I was going to play for you my soprano saxophone. How many of you have seen a soprano saxophone? All right. It's a little guy that sounds a lot like a, or like an opal. And... Um, I, but it's a single reed instrument. Oboes are double reed. And when you think of oboe, you think of the snake charmer music of somebody overseas playing and while this snake dances around. That's the sound of the oboe. Can you give me, seeing as how Jackson's got us carried away on double reed instruments, what's another double reed instrument? Another double reed instrument. Anybody? Double reed. 
That means there are two reeds that are, that are wrapped together. And that's how you get the sound. How about the praying mantis instrument? What's the praying mantis instrument? Bassoon. The bassoon. It looks like you grabbed a toothpick. And you're holding this toothpick up and down. And they have the funniest sound. And they're used for comical uh, caricatures uh, in music. And they can be used quite seriously, too. I need to give you a demonstration of some of these that you haven't heard before. Another a variation, by the way, on the oboe is the English horn, which is simply a large oboe. Um, let's see. What other instrument? How about clarinet? Single reed. And somebody's going to say saxophone. And sort of that's true, but in most orchestras, they don't use a saxophone unless they're drawing from a particular composer. Um, I'm going to bring at least, I'll bring two of my saxophones. I have an alto and a soprano here. My baritone saxophone is in Minnesota because it was too heavy to bring. I, how many of you have seen a baritone saxophone? All right, they're big. And then I think I got to play one time, uh, or at least be with a, a bass saxophone. That's really interesting. Anyway. Saxophones, of course, everybody thinks, you know, they're just used for one style of jazz or something, but they're not. And I hope to play for you when we do more music, a, uh, a saxophone quartet uh, playing some of the most beautiful classical music. The sound of a saxophone, it has been said, is, is really it can approximate a pipe organ. It's just unbelievable. Now... <clears throat> What else do we have in the woodwinds? We've got the clarinets. And I think we've covered most of them. I'll probably think of one in my sleep tonight. But anyway, what else do we have? The brass. brass. Well, who's the high guy in the brass? Trumpet. trumpet. How about cornets? What's the difference between a trumpet and a cornet? A trumpet is cylindrical. It's round all the way through, and that's why you get that. And I was going to bring a trumpet today and really wake you up, give you some big fanfare. I'm going to do that, yeah. But you can use a trumpet, um, and it really has a piercing sound. It can. You can make it mellow. But, but cornets are a little shorter, usually, and they're conical. So the, the shape inside's a little different. So you get a mellower sound. But if you want a really mellow sound, you'll go to a flugelhorn. How many of you know what a flugelhorn is? It looks like a bloated trumpet. And it's just sitting there really big, but it has that real delicate, dark sound. It's just gorgeous. And then as we move down in the brass, we move to the trombone. The ones, you know, they have lots of plumbing and you see them going back and forth, and, and we'll talk about that more later. Baritones are sometimes used, but not often in an uh, In fact, I can't really think of much of an ins uh, instance where baritones are used, but a baritone essentially is a small tuba, and tuba is the large, the large um, member of the brass family. Uh, what's the difference between a tuba and a sousaphone? Sousaphone's that thing that wraps around you and you see them walking in parades. And tubas are just, you usually just sit with it and it's a big upright instrument or it can have a bell forward. Now, the other one that we left out is a percussion instrument. And of course that would be what? Snare drum, bass drum, triangles. Who else? Timpani, piano. Who said that? They deserve a cliff bar, if you remind me, because nobody ever thinks of it that way if they haven't been introduced to music. The piano is a percussion instrument. And why would that be? Because it's hammered. You know, you don't have to hammer it, but it's hammered, no matter how delicate you play. It's a hammer instrument. Now, there's a whole other division of uh, percussion that um, I haven't talked to you about, and that's melodic percussion. What might they be? Oh, like xylophone. Ah, xylophone, vibraharp, 
Bells? Absolutely. Oh, it's just, when you, I think of all these things, and I want to give you some examples next time, it's just so much to think about. And so the difference between a hymn, between a hymn and Beethoven's fifth is simply the degree of complexity. And as we learned last year, a hymn usually is a statement, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And then what happens? You go from an A statement to a B digression. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We come back to the A. Now, some of you look a little too vacant for me. So would you come on up? Thank you. And let's just give a phrase of what a friend we have in Jesus. Let's do the first phrase. What a friend we have in Jesus. It's just a beautiful way to illustrate some of these things. Stop. Now, he's going to add a little more to it and listen closely. Go ahead, keep moving. stop. What did he just do? He repeated his opening statement, didn't he? But now the close of this phrase is a little different than the close of the first phrase. Yeah, now play the close of the first phrase. That last part. Now play the close of the phrase of the second one. See? Oh, it's phenomenal. Music is so interesting. Now he's going to take off and take us on a trip. He's going to go to the what part? The B. The, the digression, we would say. So digress for us. And stop. Did you hear the digression? It was different, a new melody. Now, your ear, this is so cool, your ear is already insisting where he's going to go. You want to go home. You want to go home to the first musical statement that you heard. And he's going to take us home now. Do. Now, did you catch that? He ended where he started, and your mind has closure. It's just, it's a basic principle. A, B, A. Twinkle, twinkle, little stars the same. You know, you make a statement, you digress. Beethoven's fifth and many complex numbers are just variations and developments of A, B, A form. And especially if you're Mozart or something, well, then you use every letter of the alphabet almost. But nevertheless, it's got that concept. And now, uh, when we listen, by the way, in a symphony, it's, it's not just ABA. It's called, you know, Sonata Allegro form. And so you, you have these statements and then uh, digression and then you return to them. I appreciate this so much. Now, we're going to do a couple little things here to help you. Uh, I, I want you all to take out your hymnal very quickly, and we're going to show you how to enjoy your hymnal a little bit more. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into some other things later. But I want you to turn to 186, 186, 186 in the hymnal. Now, you'll notice that there are how many flats? Four flats. Four flats. Those, that means that you're in the key of A flat. And that, which means that if you go from A flat to A flat, you're going to have to flat four of the notes in order to get a major scale. Now, 
We, another way you can tell what key it's in is go to the last note. What is the last note in the melody line? A flat. Pretty interesting. And it's in the key of A flat. Now, I'm going to ask our beloved pianist to play uh, just a few bars and I'll stop you. Okay, now believe it or not, the reason, how many of you know this song? I hope everybody knows it. You know why this song sticks in your mind? It's because of the repetitive rhythm. And what you have is this, this whole song is introduced in, on the weakest beat, three. We would call that beat three a pickup beat. So you're going to go, I found a friend. And so you're now emphasizing found. And, and the music helps to emphasize the beautiful message and the lyrics. I found a friend. You see how that works? And then it has a dotted eighth and a sixteenth. Those are the, the second and third notes. And that rhythm, I was going to bring my drums today too, but they'll, they'll come. It's just simply this. Bum, ba, bum, da, da, da. And that rhythm is a, the whole song. That's what it is. And that's why you like it, why you can remember it, why it's uh, something that minimizes surprise, but yet carries enough interest to arrest your soul. So let's say, and by the way, he interpreted it correctly. Usually, we tend to straighten out things. So we will go, I found a friend, oh, instead of, I found a friend, bum, bum, ba -dum. You know, we tend to distort and weaken the rhythms in a lot of our songs. Uh, I guess, because we've heard so many things against rhythm, I guess we run the other way. But there are a lot of good rhythms, and there are interesting rhythms in the hymnal that you wouldn't believe, including the Scottish snap. But let's, uh, now, let's take the, um, the, let's just keep going and I'll stop you. Now, what do you think we're going to come to now? B, the digression. Stop. <laughs> what is it you want? The A statement again. The opening statement. Please give it to us. They're getting nervous. See? And you never knew that you were such musicians. That you, It's just built in you. That you crave these resolutions. It's just, it's just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Now I want to give you one more example before we close here. 318. 318. I think I'll be able to use this. Yes. Oftentimes our biggest weakness in hymnology, I think, one of the biggest weaknesses is triplet meters or three-quarter time, depending on... Um, what you're looking at, because we tend to go one note after another instead of in phrases. And if you spoke like you sang, you would sound something like, I'm so glad I came today. That's how we sing. And that's one of the reasons why young people are so bored with hymns and why this we have, you know, rock and roll worships because we have destroyed the hymns. Now, this one right here, 318, um, I want you just to kind of plod along, kind of bum, 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 bum. Try it. Kind of plodding. Ninety-eight percent of the time we sing like that in some variation. If you look at this, 
You can really phrase it in at least two measure phrases, thinking, da, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and it just glides along, and it helps everything to be more meaningful. So listen to it as we glide this time. Here we go. Lord Jesus. Yeah, let's play, let's take this one um, at a faster tempo without sounding rushed, about like, da, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, here we go. One, two, da, one, two, three. Stop. You see how it holds together so much better? It's just gorgeous. And let's close by singing it together. It's such a wonderful, let's sing it all together. How about an introduction? Okay, not too slow now. Lord Jesus, I love to be perfect. One, two, da, one, two, three, four. So just live in my soul. Break down every idol, cast out every fear. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than. Very nice. Whiter than snow. Yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. It just makes it exquisite. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Let's bow our heads and thank the Lord for music. Thank the Lord for the Psalms that list so many musical uh, things, which we'll talk about next time. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee that the psalmist and many others call us to praise the Lord with voice and instrument. And we ask that we will do the same. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Graham, to share a nice music lesson for us. Is that such a blessing? Amen? Amen. Yeah, so thank you for our online viewer. Uh, for, uh, thank you for our online viewer today. And we welcome you at the same time, 8 a.m. tomorrow, to join our um, worship service. So, announcement. Any announcement?